I'll tell you the secret. You know, everything we do in life all comes from the subconscious. Most of the choices we make, we think, comes from the conscious, but it's wrong. Almost everything comes from your subconscious. For instance, if you go to an office, they want to sell you something. Sales office. If the walls will be black, you won't buy. Or dark gray, you won't buy. But if it will be light blue, you will be very, very relaxed, very calm, and the chance to sell to you is a lot higher. The color of the walls can affect the choice that you make if to buy or not to buy. But I'll give you an example. There's one guy in Israel, they call him Aman Achushim. You, all of you know him, even though you're not Israelis. His name is Nimrod. Calling your son Nimrod is similar to calling your son Adolf. But his parents probably didn't know Torah. They didn't know who Nimrod was. Nimrod was the Hitler of those days. So they called them son Nimrod. Nimrod means let's rebel against God. That's what it means. Nimrod, married. But I give his parents the benefits of the doubt. They just like the name. They didn't know what it means. This guy is a magician. He can read your mind. He can do all kinds of things. How do you know him? He's the presenter of Elal. When you go in Elal, they show you how to buckle your seat and all that. This guy with the cards. And what about the card? That's the guy. You saw him, no? On the Elal commercial. When you go before a takeoff. Leo? Mise Nimodas? Tov. Anyway, listen carefully what happened with him. One time he says, Rabotai, Rabotai, I'm going to tell you to choose a number now. Choose a number. No. When we come back from the commercial, I will tell you the number you chose. This is a million people now watching it. Now everybody will choose the same number. How can he tell the number? I'm thinking to myself, what's this trick here? Let me choose a number. What number I chose? 23. He comes back from the commercial. And now the number that you chose is 23. Say, Ma? Wow, this guy knows his stuff. Started to shake a little bit. We have a new prophet. We didn't know since Muhammad 1300 years there was a strike on prophets. Baruch Hashem, we have a new one. <laughs> she says his name is not Nimrod, Lior. So we have to apologize to his parents. Lior Sushard. I thought his name is Nimrod. Anyway, there's somebody else Nimrod that is also a magician. But okay, I get confused, I guess. Anyway, listen carefully. This Lior. <laughs> He knew the number I chose. And probably everybody else chose the same number. Now he say, you're probably all wondering, how did I read your mind? This time I'm willing to teach you the trick. Now he shows in a slow motion. When I ask you, choose a number, now he was standing in the street of Tel Aviv and hundreds of people crossing the street behind him. And just when he say, choose a number, now, that second, now, a guy behind him with a t-shirt of Michael Jordan, number 23, just quickly pass, very fast, walks across the street. And he went into the subconscious. I didn't pay attention to the guys behind him. I was focusing on him. Now I have to choose a number. Which number I chose? The number he pushed into my subconscious. That trick is the secret of life. Every day you have millions of things like this that are pushed into your subconscious without you realizing it. The people at your job, the people at your work, the neighbors, the things you hear on the street, a movie you watch. Do you know how many things it sends to your subconscious? I'll give you an example. Today, almost every person who comes to cry to me about his problems have the same issue. I'll give you one guess. Kvodarav, ani bebaaya gdola. What's your problem? 
יש לי, who knows, I have anxiety attack, panic attacks, anxiety attacks. Uh, some of you already know what I'm talking about. Almost every problem, anxiety attacks. For the love, I'm sweating in my hands, I don't sleep at night, my pulse go very fast, I sometimes feel I get a heart attack, I'm out of breath, right? You know what I'm talking about. How come so many millions of people have it? When I was a child, I never heard about it. Not one person we ever heard that has a panic attack. When I was a child, out of 100,000 people in Israel, maybe you had one gay. Today it's almost three, three, a third, almost a third. How come one gay and now all of a sudden you're from 100,000, you have maybe 30,000 gays. How can it be? The answer is, it depends what they push into your mouth, your mind. If they constantly push it, push it, push it, it settles in the back of your mind. It changed the entire world, the way you think. It changed what you desire, it changed what you like and hate, it changed your beliefs, it changed everything about you. They re-modified your complete personality. That's called a silent brainwash. They brainwash you in such a way you don't pay attention. They push it in the commercials, they push it in the movies, they push it in all kinds of signs that you see on the street. In schools, they constantly push it to the children to become gay and admire the gays. And if you're not one of them, you're not normal and you're not open-minded. That's all they do. That's all they do. When I was a child, it was the exact opposite. We did not grow up religious. Do you know what they did? If someone was gay in my school, there were 400 students and one guy was gay. And now one student there was religious. Everyone was secular. Chilonim, kulam. This guy had the biggest hell on earth in school. Do you know what he had to go through in school? It would break the heart what the students did to him. Pull his hair, kick him, get out of here, don't come near me. Nobody wants to sit next to him in a class. The teacher said, Moshe, sit next to him. You sit next to him. I'm going to kick you out. Kick me out. I'm not coming back to school. Nobody wanted to come near him. Every secular kid in Israel saw that it's a mental disease. I don't want anything to do with this. I'm not sitting next to him. I'm not talking to him. I'm not shaking his hands. I'm not doing anything. Today is the exact opposite. Today most of the kids in the class are like this. And nobody thinks there's anything wrong. So what changed in 40 years? It's only one generation. The constant brainwash that it's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, that people would go against the law of nature, against the rules of God, against the Creator. Nothing is wrong with us. You must to accept everyone. It's perfectly normal. You are not normal. If you don't accept something like this, that means you are wicked. You are primitive. Go back to Iran. We don't want you here. You're not a liberal. We don't want you in our society. So now even people that despite that are afraid to talk.